Okay, let's model some exponential function. On this one, we have a vehicle that's purchased for $29,500 and depreciates, so it gets reduced value at a constant rate of 5% per year. We want to determine the approximate value of this vehicle 14 years after the purchase. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to set up a model for the situation, kind of going through and looking at all the different information that's thrown our direction. I'm using the compound interest formula, as you can see here. I'm going to identify our variables off to the left-hand side. Initially, we'll set up a function that can determine whichever year, number of years, we plug in, and then we'll actually fill in our 14 years to answer this specific question. All right, I'm using the compound interest formula instead of the continuously compounded interest formula because I don't see that keyword continuous or continuously anywhere in this wording. That's the one A equals P times E raised to the R times T power. All right, so going through here, we have purchased this uh, for 29500 well, that's the initial value, what you start with, basically. Sometimes in banking problems like this, we call it the principal. It's going to be filled in for P, so 29500 It depreciates, keyword kind of coming in there, at a constant rate of 5% per year. So 5% is going to be our rate, but because this is depreciating, it's going to be a negative rate. Also, when we fill into this formula, what we want to do is go from a percentage over to a decimal. So to do that, we're going to take our decimal plate point and we're going to move it over two places to the left. So in our case, that's going to be 0 0.05, and it, again, is negative because this is depreciating. It's going to get plugged in for our rate, R. Um, finally, we want to fill in N. Um, N is the number of compoundings, the number of times this happens per year. All right, so in our case, it depreciates 5% each year, meaning that it's going to be 5% less value in our car year after year after year. So that's going to happen once per year. So n is going to be 1. Putting this all together into our formula, I am leaving out t right now, and I'm leaving a of t out. We want to create the formula first, and then we'll use it, and we'll fill in that 14 years to answer this specific question. So 29,000. 500, that's what it started with as our principal, 1 plus negative 0 0.05 gets filled in for our rate, R, 1 gets filled in for N, and then 1 times T up in our exponent. Now let's do a little bit of reducing down to get our formula looking a little bit nicer. So 29,500, staying out in front, 1 times T makes just T up in our exponent. But what's on the inside there? Well, we have that fraction. Dividing by 1 doesn't really change anything. So really, that's 1 plus a negative 0 0.05. Or 1 minus 0 0.05 is 0 0.95. Is a little bit nicer way to write what's on the inside. All right, now we have that function we'll model with whatever number of years we want to plug in for our time frame. So we could figure out what this car will be worth in two years if we were asked that or just curious. In this one, we are specifically asked about 14 years down the road. So in ours, we're going to evaluate this when t is 14. So a of 14 is going to be 29,500 times 0 0.95 raised to the 14th power have to get the calculator out to help us on this one. This is going to be approximately 14,386.41188 is what my calculator gave me out. So instead of 41188, I'm going to go ahead and round to the nearest cent, which is pretty typical in these cases. Um, that would be two decimal places here. So because that next digit is below 5, I'm going to round down to 0.41. All right, hope this helps out as you're trying to model, uh, do mathematical modeling with word problems and come up with functions and actually fill in and evaluate using those functions. Good luck.